Well, this episode's a bit shorter. It's not 40 minutes, it's only 10, and plus my stuff's probably going to be a bit longer. All I know is that it is another Pokemon fan fiction. Well, let's not waste any time and let's watch the last episode of... Is it... Which episode is this again? 217. Okay. Fanfic Critic lost episode of 217. I'll see you at the end of this video. I'm the fanfic critic. I read it, you listen. This is another Pokemon fanfic. That occurred because when I found out that this was another Pokemon fanfic, I just kind of, um, flipped out. Susan had to heavily restrain me. She surprisingly didn't use the face pistol on me, though, but I think she doesn't want to use that anymore for her own personal reasons. Although it might have been better if she had used it on me because this probably wouldn't have happened. And no, don't worry. She didn't do this to me. No, this was just me flipping out. She had to lock me downstairs in the root cellar for me to calm down. And when she came down, um, she discovered that my eye had done this. Um, and she tried to reassure me and say that this fanfic might not be as bad as the one I reviewed in the last, um episode, but I I have my doubts. So let's hope that Susan's right. And today I brought along my little mudkip here by the name of Kipper. He um, doesn't get as motion sickness as um, Draco does when it comes to me playing around with Pokeball. Yeah, that's kind of why Draco fainted. It was because he gets motion sickness. And uh, when he found out that I was doing another Pokemon fanfic and I asked if he wanted to be involved in it, he said no. So, uh, Kipper here, I don't know if I'll take him out and ask him what his opinion is, really, because he might not even, his type of Pokemon might not even show up in this fanfic, but if, if it does, I, I might have him come out and talk a little bit about the story. Until then, though, um, he shall be put down here, and um, instead I will be holding um, this, because, uh -huh. okay then, uh, let's get started. Today's fanfic is called Survival, and it's by Storm the Husky. It's, um, literature, prose, fiction, general fiction, yes, um, this is a long story, 17 chapters, I'm just going to be reading the prologue, it's on DeviantArt, um, it has 13 comments, 12 favorites, 603 views, probably more by the time this, um, uploads, and 6 downloads. So, um, Let's get started. I'll try to read this the best I can. As you can see, my eyesight's not going to be as good as it normally is. Because this eye is bulbed out so much that I can't even see in it, so I have to focus on this eye. And I think this is my weaker eye, because it seems like even when I'm wearing glasses, this eye is blurrier than that eye. Maybe I should get new glasses. <clears throat> the wind blew uneasily as it blew on the trees in the empty forest. It scattered tree leaves throughout the space within the trees and across the grassy ground. The sky was dark and gray, threatening with rain. It left a dark outlook around the forest. There was a trail cutting straight through the forest, lined with rocks and stones, as well as broken pokeballs and other trash objects of the like. It was empty, no sign of life at all. 
That was until footsteps echoed through the air and two voices were heard. A semi-sage carefully walked down the trail, passing and kicking a nearby medicine case. Next to him was a doo-wot wearing orange sunshades. Hmm, Travolta. The doo-wot asked, glancing at the broken Pokeball case. Shouldn't it have a question mark or whatever? I don't care. Yeah, the semi-sage replied. The doo looked concerned. It might be an inaccurate question, but do you really think the others are still alive? Seriously, Lennon, of course, the semi-sage chuckled, confident but nervous, especially if you stick with Darunia. If he's still alive, of course, <clears throat> he should protect the rest, but otherwise, I don't think they're dead yet. I hope you're right, the doo sighed. The two continued to walk down the trail. Until they eventually approached the shore, they were close to the ocean. The trail now curved to the right, and the forest clashed with the beach. A whole walk down. Looking out to the water was a fine line between sky and ocean, and made the horizon. The two Pokemon continued walking on the seaside trail, the doo turning to the horizon and gazed at it for a good couple of seconds and whispered something to himself. If there's anyone still out there. One minute to dust off. The sound of helicopter blades boomed over the voice as the space next to the main runway of Mistralchion's airport was occupied with one single helicopter. This helicopter was different from the ones that usually came and went. However, it was one of the Sinnoh Royal Army. The Sinnoh-owned army aircraft was obviously not common in Unova, but it was here for a certain purpose. Inside the helicopter was a commanding Lucario outfitted in combat camouflage and armed with a rifle and gear. Again, this is another fanfic where Pokemon... I don't know. Maybe this is supposed to be kind of like Not Molo's universe where Pokemon are more human-like and stuff, perhaps. Either way, it's written a lot better than the last fanfic was. I'll give it that much credit. He wore a black headband around his neck. Accompanying him was a calm black was a calm blaziken with the same outfit, and instead of a rifle, a light machine gun and a gravoil with a sniper rifle. Unlike his helmet comrades, the gravoil had a booty cap on. They all sat on either side of the helicopter, which was near the rear of the chopper. The grovial looked annoyed. Where the hell's Arthur? We're going to leave without him, he said. Oh, I'm sorry, English accent. Where the hell is Arthur? We're going to leave without him, he said, an English accent in his voice. The Blaziken pointed to something outside the helicopter, outside the wide open door. Relax, he assured. He's here. The grovial sighed as he looked at the figure running towards the chopper. It was a dressed out Zorok who ran towards the chopter with a rifle in his hands. When he reached the chopter, he slowed down and got in. He was greeted by the three Pokemon's disappointed faces, especially the Groviles. The Zorok sighed nervously. Sorry about being late, he said, taking his seat closest to the open door. There was no direct apply, just the Lucario's next command. He turned to the pilots in the front of the chopper. Go now, he said, pointing his thumb to the air. The pilot and co-pilot both nodded and turned the controls. He turned back to his squad and began to give a briefing as the helicopter rose up and took off to the sky. Everyone looked at him as he held up a map on the wall behind his seat. Okay, guys, our mission this time is to rescue a group of humans stranded in a region completely uninhabited by Pokemon. Legend has it that every Pokemon there hates humans, so that's why they're sending us in. The humans' positions are unknown, but the Air Force recon team thinks they're somewhere near this area. He pointed on the map to a large silly, circled with a bright red marker. We are going to land there too. Stay vigilant, because we don't have an exact idea as of what's out there. If you see something threatening to our mission, take it out. And if you see any sign of human life, you check it out. Do you copy? Lieutenant Alan Kyle, copy, the blaze can said, at attention. Corporal Daniel London, copy, the Grovile repeated. Private Arthur Sandburn, copy. The Zora Rock finished. Hmm, maybe this is like a reverse thing where Pokemon rule the world and humans do not. Interesting. Lucario nodded and looked out the door. The helicopter had long left Unova and was now in unmarked territory over the great blue ocean. The waves began to get choppy as the helicopter flew towards the large landmass and island. It was quite large. I, uh, it was. 
quite a large island, large enough to be a region. The Zoroark nor nervously looked out the door as well, which was so close to him that he could stick his head out to no problems. He saw the island a distance away from them. Completely uninhabited by Pokemon? Huh, well, that's the end of the prologue. I have to say, I'm pretty interested in the story so far. I would love to read more of it, but I think I'll start to get a headache if I read any more, only because I'm only using this one eye. Uh, I should probably go to the doctor and get this fixed. I'll probably do that. Well, this fanfic was way, 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 way better than the last Pokemon fanfic I read. And, um... Yep, Kipper likes it too. Let's hope that the next fanfic is not a Pokemon fanfic. No offense to you guys, don't get me wrong, I love Pokemon and stuff, but a lot of the fanfics about Pokemon tend to be bad. And if it is, despite whether it is or isn't a Pokemon fanfic, let's hope it's a good one. Well, I'm the fanfic critic. I read it, you listen, I need to get a new eyeball. Why did I let her review the story with her eye like that? What was I thinking? I should have brought her to the hospital immediately. Ah, you know, to be honest with you, I forgot all about that. Maybe it was because she just looked so bloody scarring. I mean, oh my god, it was unsettling. I was trying not to stare the entire time. It's a good thing the story was good, though, because that... Hmm, Although I don't agree with her. I deliberately didn't use the face pistol for a reason. I was on the fence about getting rid of it and stuff, but I know that she said, oh, you probably should have, but no, I didn't want to use it. And I think that was when I started to research the Vulcan Pinch. Like, I hadn't started trying to do it all myself yet, but that's when I was starting to research it and seeing if it was actually possible or not. But, with that said, um, this episode was way better. Well, the story in this episode was way better than the last one. Way more tolerable. I don't know if Meg ever did finish reading it or not. But, I digress. At least it was better than the other one. Well, thank you all for watching today's lost episode of Fanfic Critic. If you liked today's episode, please be sure to leave a like and leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'd greatly appreciate it. I will see you all in the next episode. Until then, cheerio.